From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan in captivity. Tarzan had left the city of Grutendahl several days before. He had traveled both night and day, anxious to be in his jungle once again. And now, his goal reached, he rested in the crotch of a tree slept as peacefully as you or I might sleep on a feather bed. He was completely relaxed because he was confident that even in sleep, his sensitive nostrils would catch the scent of an approaching enemy. His acute hearing warn him of the coming of man or beast. And yet Tarzan did not stir as the gray-bearded Arab walked noiselessly along the jungle path, climbed the tree where Tarzan rested, and crouched on a nearby branch looking at the jungle man curiously. Allah grants such sleep only to the innocent. Uh, Who are you? What do you want? You need not reach for your knife, Tarzan. Had I meant you harm, I would not have delayed my act until you awakened. Yes. I suppose that's true. As Allah is my witness, it is true. The wise need not mask their words in falsehoods when truth conquers citadels. Your words are as strange to me as your actions. Perhaps it's because I am confused. Never before has anyone approached me without giving some hint of his coming. I heard no sound. I, I caught no scent. In every age, there lives one who surmounts the obstacles of the seven senses. The seven senses? You speak in the most fantastic riddles. But all riddles have answers, if we know where to find them. The answers to those now uppermost in your mind lie with me. You heard me not because I made no sound. You failed to catch my scent because I did not imbue the air with one. Who are you? I am the Grand Wazir of the Caliph of Karadan. You have heard of the Caliph, my master? Very little for... For as I understand it, his province is surrounded by a wall so high no one can scale it, and no one passes through its gate without his bidding. And now you are bid to enter this kingdom. You are invited to be the guest of the spiritual and civil leader of tens of thousands of people. The caliph is inviting me to be his guest? Why? One does not question the motives of our potentate. Perhaps it was rude of me. Thank your master for me, if you will. Tell him I have just returned to my jungle, uh, perhaps in a few months. The invitation is for now. The way you say invitation, it sounds like command. The lord of the jungle may make his own interpretation of my words. I have done so. And whether I am invited or commanded to come to Haradan, the answer is still the same. I am not leaving my jungle home at the moment. Tarzan, as a good servant of the caliph, I attempted to use whatever graciousness Allah has bestowed upon me to persuade you to return... Since my humble efforts have failed, I shall have to take other measures to ensure your appearance in our capital. <laughs> you you intend taking me there by force? I am the Grand Wazir. A wizard, huh? The term cannot be so easily translated. As I have learned the secrets of moving noiselessly through your jungle, of erasing every vestige of my body scent, so have I mastered other secrets of nature. <laughs> no, no. I shall not have to exert force, at least not my physical force. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to our story of Tarzan in captivity. The Grand Wazir disappeared as silently as he had come, seeming to melt into the darkest regions of the primordial jungle. Tarzan did not know fear in its ordinary sense, but his brow was furrowed and his thoughts still remained with the emissary of the caliph as he made his way cautiously through the jungle. And even as his thoughts conjured possible dangers from the wazir, a sleek, powerful black panther came toward him. But as it sprang, Tarzan turned, twisted from its path, pulled his great hunting knife from its sheath. The beast was a clawing, spitting fury of destruction as it lunged at Tarzan's throat. But Tarzan moved a split second before the cruel fangs could find their mark, and with one great stroke, his knife plunged deep into the flesh beneath a shiny black fur. Another black panther. 
and another, and still a whole pack of them. But this is mad. Black Panthers in this district, and a, a pack of them, they don't travel in... Pa- Aja! Aja! The Grand Wazir. Ah, it's well that I am here, and that these Black Panthers do my bidding. Another moment, and you would have gone to your maker. That is true. Until you spoke, they were snarling messengers of death, but now they stand like household pets. And yet, with another word, I can have them rend you limb from limb. Now do you return with me to Karadan? I... I seem to have no choice. Take me to your caliph. Perhaps I should have accepted your first invitation, Grand Wazir. I have never seen such splendor. It's something to remember. These halls are of marble brought over 8,000 miles for the caliph's palace. The walls of the throne room are encrusted with more jewels than you could find in the earth were you to have a 1,000 miners dig for a 1,000 years. Are we on our way to the throne room now? No. The caliph has no desire to have his emirs, viceroys, or grandees of the realm learn of his business with you. We are invited to his chambers. Invited? You, You still have a strange concept of the meaning of that word. This is the entrance to the caliph's chambers. Tarzan, I would humbly offer you a bit of advice. Do not anger the caliph. Do not, for example, depreciate his invitation. You have your choice of being treated as an honored guest or as a slave. During the few hours I have been here, I have seen how your slaves are treated. You witnessed but a few lashes of chastisement. There are more, ah, serious punishments for more serious crimes. This is the door to the caliph's sanctum. The Grand Wazir? It is indeed the Grand Wazir, Your Excellency. Enter, enter. Favored son of Allah, I bring before you the mighty monarch of the jungle. He comes into your presence. Now, now, we have no need for such ceremony between friends. Welcome, Tarzan. I am extraordinarily happy that you have consented to come to Haradan. I am happy to be here. I desire to learn more of a people who can train Sheeta the panther to do their bidding. Oh, uh, you uh, refer to the extraordinary pets of the Grand Wazir? They are dangerous animals, despite his training. I do not like having them about. Their presence in the courtyard surrounding the palace is most useful. It keeps those who should not enter on the outside, and those who should not leave... Within. It must be a pretty sight to see your pets prevent the escape of a guest. <laughs> uh, the wazir is filled with an extraordinary sense of the dramatic. The panthers are kept caged, except at night. During the day, there is no need for them. Not with an entire company of fierce Senegalese, whose chief delight is in the use of their bayonets. Uh, you may save yourself the trouble of going into further particulars about your means of protection. I, uh... I am quite confident no one could gain access to the palace without consent or leave without permission. Tarzan, we have had quite enough of this discussion. It is my desire to make you so extraordinarily happy here that you will have no desire to leave. My greatest joy will be to heap riches upon you, to shower you with the treasures of my realm. If you do the bidding of His Excellency. Really, my faithful court, I'm afraid I cannot conduct a normal conversation with Tarzan in your presence. Your Excellency wishes me to leave? No. I shall discuss my business with Tarzan later. I am now extraordinarily tired, and surely Tarzan must be wary from his long trip. With Your Excellency's permission, I would discuss this business for which I have been brought here now. I realize your impatience, Tarzan, but I desire to delay our conversation until another can be present. I know you will take my word that that is best. All right, we shall wait then. Thank you. Tarzan, I am sure that our hearts are attuned. Allah has sent you to me as a brother. He has provided me with a man to whom I can bear my soul. You will be the instrument through which I can accomplish my great purpose. Mihil Maktoub. It is written thus. Mihil Maktoub. It is written thus. Strange, enigmatic words that meant everything and nothing. What business was there to be transacted between Tarzan and the Caliph of Karadan? How was Tarzan to serve as the instrument through which the Caliph was to accomplish some great purpose? 
The questions crowded Tarzan's mind as the Grand Wazir guided him through the endless corridors of the extravagant palace, by a hundred gold-encrusted doors, past a score of watchful sentries, through an exquisite inner garden, and to the gates of a special wing of the palace, a section of the ornate structure even more luxurious than the rest, if such a thing were possible. Your quarters are here, Tarzan. The slaves will do everything possible to make you comfortable. At least my legs will not become cramped in these quarters. I think this wing must be as large as the village of the Punyas. All of this is for my use. Oh, no. There are other guests in this wing. You see, our diplomatic visitors are quartered in the Jade Wing. Those we invite here for matters of trade relations are housed in the Pearl Wing. This section is kept for our permanent guests. Permanent? I shall leave you here. The slaves have been instructed to do your bidding. The caliph will let you know when he desires to communicate with you. But how will I know where to find... I shall be happy to lead you to your chambers. What? This great hall leads to the sleeping rooms of those of us who reside here. And also to the drawing rooms and libraries. And other facilities the caliph provides for us. I see. Then you are a guest also? Yes. I am Maida. You thought me a slave girl. Well, your clothes... I have long since adopted the clothing of the harem. They are more comfortable, and they seem to blend more naturally with the surroundings. I have been a guest here for almost 20 years. For 20 years? But you seem scarcely more than 20 years of age now. I was but a child when I came here, at the caliph's invitation. My father was the ruler of a small province near here... And protocol demanded that the invitation be accepted. Of course. While I was here, a revolution broke out in my country. My father was killed. I'm sorry. Perhaps the revolution was not instigated by the caliph. But he did not desire that I should return to my people. For he was anxious to annex my country to his. And if you returned, your people might have elected you ruler? Women do not rule in this land. But they sometimes have influence. Only... Were I to return now, what could I tell them? Nothing. Save that I have been treated as a daughter, that the caliph has showered me with gifts, that every desire has been satisfied almost before the wish found voice. I see. And, and what about the other guests here? A scientist who parted with many wonderful secrets and was rewarded richly, but cannot be permitted to leave lest he also tell his secret to others. Some of the Grand Wazir's information comes from him, then. They meet often. Also, the Wazir has many conferences with the others. The architect, whose genius must design buildings for the caliph alone. The goldsmith. The lapidary. The gunsmith. The others. But I am not an artisan. What, what can he want with me? I do not know. But I know this. Regardless of what the caliph tells you, regardless of how charming he is to you, he will never permit your departure. Even after you have served his purpose, it is his inflexible rule. And should you refuse to serve him? Yes, what if I should refuse to do what he asks? I have been here 20 years. Many nights have I been sleepless, kept awake by the screams... And many days have been filled with the horror I have seen in the courtyard below. The screams, the, the anguished cries of torment came from those who refused the bidding of the Caliph of Caradan. In just a moment, we shall learn of the Caliph's plans for Tarzan. Although Tarzan much preferred to eat the meat of freshly killed game and to drink water from a swiftly flowing jungle stream, he could not help but admit that the repast served to him in the wing of permanent guests was a delicious one, an assortment of the Orient's richest delicacies and most delicate ambrosias. And the company was equally delightful. Skilled artisans, painters, musicians, scientists, masters of everything save their own fate. And when dinner was over... Tarzan was escorted to the caliph's sanctum once more, there to learn his fate. 
Pray be seated, Tarzan. I wasn't sure I was permitted to sit in your presence. <laughs> you are as yet a stranger here. We shall not be stern about matters of custom until you are used to us. Thank you for your leniency. For your future guidance, however, I might point out that there you must be seated at once when I am seated. And should I recline, you must recline. Never must your head be higher than that of the caliph. My height makes that difficult. You will incline your head to compensate for the extraordinary difference in our stature. Oh, oh, oh not now. There is time for such formal behavior later. Now... I would talk to you as a brother. I certainly have no desire to delay our talk, but you did say something about waiting until someone else could be present. My Ibn will be present shortly. Ibn? I'm, I'm sorry, my knowledge of Arabic is very limited. Oh, a thousand pardons. Ibn means son. The Amir of Karadan will present himself when the time comes. Amir? Uh, that means prince? Precisely. And it is of the Amir that I would speak to you. It is for him that I have called you from your jungle. I do not understand. Oh, you will. It will be an extraordinarily clear to you in a moment. I hope so. When you entered my province, you observed a great wall, so high that no one, uh, not even the lord of the jungle, can scale it. I saw the wall. For many generations, it has kept us secluded, alone, free from foreign influences, away from the contamination of other peoples. Yes. But we are living in a different world. No longer can my people stay apart from others. No longer can the wall serve as an effective barrier against progress. Soon, my people will intermarry with others. Their ideas will become ours. Their customs will intermingle with those of Haradan. But what has this to do with the Amir and me? I was raised in the old manner. My speech is that of another age. Because I was a prince, I could not learn to play as other boys. I could not attend school. I could not learn the ways of the outside world. My son must be raised differently. But you surely do not think of me as a teacher. And extraordinary teacher. I did much research concerning you. I've ascertained that you excel at every form of athletics. I've ascertained that you speak a dozen languages, that you have knowledge of many subjects. I want you to train the Amir so that he can be prepared to face a modern world. But I am not a teacher. That There are many tutors you could engage. My would... son will be taught by no spectacle-wearing, mincing school teacher. He shall be taught the ways of man by a man. I, the caliph of Haradan, have spoken. I see. I pull the silken cord that will bring my son here. Of course... It is your privilege to turn down this assignment if you are not made happy by my request. I am free to refuse your request? But of course, it would give me extraordinary pleasure were you to accept it. No, come Prince! No, do not strike me again! Be off! And do not repeat your French, wretched slave! My son, something has caused you annoyance? Wretched slave girl. She failed to cast her eyes to the ground as I passed. She will not repeat the offense, I can promise you that. It is well. Amir, come close to this stranger in our midst. He is Tarzan, lord of the jungle. You are a member of nobility? My subjects number thousands of savages and tens of thousands of animals. Ah, then you hold a position that entitles you to speak to me without kneeling. Thank you for the privilege. Well, I do not permit most people to converse with me, except through an intermediary who holds noble rank. Beloved son, I have been persuading Tarzan to accept the role of your tutor. Wouldst thou be pleased with him as a guide to the workings of the modern world? Could he make me strong, like he is strong? He could. Then I will accept his teachings. I desire greater strength in the wielding of my whip. Tarzan? Now that you have met the Amir, will you accept your assignment? There are many things I should like to teach the noble prince. I do accept. <laughs> such a change in anyone in my life, Tarzan. What have you done to the prince? I have attempted to teach him humility, sympathy, and understanding of a few new values. And he looks so different. Why, during the few months you have been here, 
He must have grown inches. Oh, more important than that, I've tried to instill in him the idea that the stronger one is, the more restraint one must show in the display of strength. It is a lesson his father might well learn. <laughs> it's too late to teach the caliph, I'm afraid, but perhaps the lessons may help his son to exist in a modern world. What is the modern world like, Tarzan? What kind of clothing do women wear? What are the latest fashions and carriages? And is it true that now people can speak to one another at some distance by means of some invention? But surely the scientists here have told you of the outer world. One finds it hard to believe stories that might as well be fairy tales told to children. Mida, I have about completed my mission here, and when it is complete, I shall be a, a permanent guest who proves most impermanent. If I can, I shall free you also. <laughs> Can we not enjoy one more series of exercises? Ah, the mind must be developed too, Amir. Oh, here is a slave with some cool drinks. We will enjoy them during our French lesson. I bow low and proffer sweet ambrosia, noble Amir, favorite son of Allah. Right, slave. In the modern world, one does not bow before another. But thank you very much for having brought the refreshments. Blessings upon thee, noble prince. Did I... Did I speak well, Tyson? You spoke like a real prince among men. But you must learn to speak so in many tongues, for someday you will travel. Now, the lesson. Voulez-vous me dire quelque chose de la fête du 14 juillet? Eh bien, c'est la fête nationale aux commémorations de la Bastille. Very good, very good. Tyson, tell me, what is Bastille Day? Really, I mean, the thought has been preying on my mind. Yes, and well it might. For in every land, there comes a time when the subjects of an autocratic ruler turn to revolution. On Bastille Day, on July 14th, 1789, the French threw off the yoke of their ruler. A few years earlier, in 1776, America had escaped from England's tyranny. This was the birth of democracy. Something that is not known here. <laughs> But, Your Excellency, Tarzan's presence threatens our very way of life. Perhaps you exaggerate, Grand Wazir. But I have heard these things with my own ears. Were the Amir to succeed to your throne, he might well do away with our form of government. Extraordinary, extraordinary. Hmm. Obviously, something must be done about Tarzan. I heard them, Tarzan. By morning, they will come to the wing of permanent guests. A dozen slaves will pounce upon you as you sleep. You will be dragged to the dungeons. It is time for me to leave now anyway, Mita. My real purpose has been accomplished. But the sentries and the panthers... I shall have to take my chances. Do you wish to brave death for liberty? No. I am not afraid of death. But I am unprepared for the world outside. I shall wait here and hope that the seeds you have planted in Armia will someday bear fruit. Goodbye then, Mita. Perhaps I shall be the first permanent guest to make his escape. And perhaps not. Tarzan moved softly along the marble corridors. He slid quietly through the many gold-encrusted doors. He leaped across the moat surrounding the palace and managed miraculously to avoid both the sentries and the panthers. But the great obstacle was yet to be overcome. The high wall that surrounded the city... Mile after mile, Tarzan searched for some spot that might be scaled, but he could find none. And then, suddenly, almost directly at his side, a section of the wall swung open. Quick, cousin, here. Amir, what is this? How did you get here? Part of the Great Wall is hollow, and it is connected with the palace by an underground passageway. But how did you know that you I... You must hurry. You can reach your jungle through this opening. The Grand Wazir has learned of your departure. Unless you pass through the wall here, you will stand little chance. Hurry, please, and Allah be with you. Goodbye, Amir. And may you someday rule with the love and affection of your people. Goodbye, Tarzan. <laughs> You did well, my son. 
Tarzan don't even suspect I had anything to do with his escape. Do you think the Grand Wazir may yet cause Tarzan trouble? <laughs> it will be some time before the Wazir escapes from the cell he himself designed for those who must be kept in captivity. Tarzan will be safe in his jungle. I shall miss him. And likewise shall I. Tarzan is truly an extraordinary person. Yes, extraordinary. <laughs> We shall return in just a moment with a word about the next exciting story of Tarzan. Fifteen degrees north of the equator, in the heart of the Anglo-Egyptian Sudan, the Blue Nile and the White Nile meet, forming a narrow hook of land strangely shaped like an elephant's trunk. The city that lies there has been given the Arabic name for elephant's trunk, Khartoum. And it is from Khartoum that many, many safaris have started in quest of the now almost forgotten gold of the Sudan. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.